Good afternoon, gamers. Welcome back to episode two of our Let's Play campaign of War in the East 2. Um, playing through the Stalingrad uh, to Berlin campaign. And what we're going to be going over today is a follow-up to where we left off in episode one. And in episode one, we did a brief overview of the game. We went through and completed the air phase, and we started our ground phase of actions. We started kind of north to south going through, and we, we made it down to the beginning of this pocket over here in terms of uh, movement of units. Uh, just as a refresher, I'm going to scroll out here, and we're going to go over kind of our strategic objectives that are going to drive a lot of our decision making today. Uh, first goal is to ultimately do a bit of a push here, um, going from east to west all the way to Riga, Poskov, to try to cut off the supply of German forces in Leningrad. That one's a little ambitious because we don't have quite as many forces capable of doing so. Uh, so that is the third of our three strategic objectives that we have. The second is trying to collapse this pocket, and this pocket represents the um, German advance towards Moscow uh, that ultimately was halted in late 1942, um, and this is where we resume, where we began our scenario, where the the tide of the war was starting to shift a little. So our strategic objective number two we're setting for ourselves is to try to cut off this pocket by making inroads in the direction of Smolensk from both flanks. Um, but really what the main goal is, is going north into this pocket, there are two lines of supply with railroads and roads uh, that we're gonna focus on trying to intercept. So we don't necessarily need to capture Smolensk and do a complete envelopment. The primary objective is to take these two routes of supply to put pressure um, on the German forces up here. Because if they are stuck up here holding this line, and they don't have that railroad road going up north to them, it's going to be very difficult for them to find themselves in a healthy supply situation. And then the primary of the three objectives is when we look towards the south of the map, is rather historically what we're going to attempt to do is in the south to cut off and encircle Stalingrad. Uh, where the German advance was really halted quite famously. And, and most who have done any studying of the Eastern Front in World War II would have heard of how the German army was surrounded. Hitler would not allow his forces to leave or break out of the encirclement and, and reunite with the Southern Army Group. Um, we're, we're hoping to try to replicate that as best we can by encircling Stalingrad and really getting most of those forces to become disbanded based off of lack of supply. And with that, what it means is here in the south, um, unless opportunities present themselves, we're going to stay very static. Uh, we're not going to be aggressively pushing down here in the south, because if we can push through Stalingrad going from north to south, we want to then cut off through Rostov, making our way all the way down to Odessa, which then will hopefully eliminate the lines of supply for both the Crimea, most importantly Sevastopol, and then also uh, these regions that are just north of the, the Caucasus Mountains. So those are strategic, strategic objectives in a brief review for everyone. We're going to go back up here towards where we left off. Um, and I do believe the last action that we had um, was here with the 381st Rifle Division and the 2nd Mechanized Corps. Did a bit of a breakthrough. Um, this part of the line was much less defended by the Germans for two reasons, I believe. One, the terrain. Uh, this is all very marsh and swamp-like land, so it's very defensible, difficult to move across it. It takes up a lot of movement points to do so. Um, and second, I think they're just primarily focusing on recovery of this pocket up here. So we did push up there, but then much to our surprise, we found... We, we did not have reconnaissance on this unit here. We found that we've actually run into the 8th Panzer Division, um, we, which is a little concerning. So we, we brought up this mechanized unit to try to reinforce the 381st Rifle Division um, as it's starting to see some supply issues as well. That orange ticker in the top left means it's starting to have some supply concerns. Um, and those across all of the chips will give you a good indicator of how they're faring. 
So let, let's continue making our way north to south along the front line of our map here, uh, executing ground uh, movement as needed, and then we'll wrap up this turn. So uh, we see here right off the bat that we probably have some opportunity against this 83rd Infantry Division. They're pretty strongly fortified with the 83rd, and when I look at this, they're in a pretty good defensive position here because this is their strongest point in their line with a defensive value of 26. Um, but then on their flanks, while they are weaker, if we toggle off the units here using the T hotkey, you'll see that there's actually this river which is going to make it very difficult for us to get in and behind uh, those forces and to cut off uh, in Vileki Luki. And I think this is actually, if I remember correctly, the first introductory scenario uh, that it suggests that you, you try when you first pick up the game. And I, I would encourage you to also do so, as it's a very small scale, easier to manage, you don't feel quite as overwhelmed going through it. So I, I see here that we've got some units that um, have a combat delay. They're not quite ready for combat, so we're not going to be able to use these in our offensive. But I do wonder if maybe we can't do a bit of a breakthrough behind them. So we're going to... Oh, forgive me. Let's see what it comes out to be odds wise. That's actually pretty close. So that's not much of an advantage there if we do so. What we're going to do is, I don't think we touched on this in episode one, but we're going to go over what support units are. And we're going to see if perhaps we can um, assign support units to one of these rifle divisions um, from our HQ and support units live off map they're not uh, visually represented anywhere on the map right now but a support unit might be a, a group of engineers it might be a small um, tank detachment it might be a scout detachment etc so to do so we're going to click on the specific division that we want to assign them to and I do think we'll probably try to attach them to 948th. And we're going to see what's available in terms of support units. We're going to click Assign and Assign Support Units. And this is all part of the 3rd Shock Army. So here we can see that these are specific units that are already attached to the 3rd Shock Army's HQ right here that we can attach to these rifle divisions. So I think what we're going to do is take one of these... Hmm... I think we'll take the 38th Tank Regiment and attach that to our unit. And when we look here at um, this specific unit, we see that it has 19 T-34s and 14 T-70s. As a refresher, the T-34 is kind of the medium um, tank that is most seen right now with the Soviet forces. Um, whereas that T-70 is a bit of a lighter recon tank. Right here, type recon. Uh, very fast, uh, but has minimal armor at best. It's still very useful, though, against infantry-based positions, um, as it provides and offers some protection. So now that we've attached that to the 948th Rifle Division, and we can see here, under Assigned, uh, the Assigned Support Units right here. And let's see if that helped us at all with the calculus as we try to do this deliberate attack. It did not really help the math, but I have a certain degree of confidence we're still going to be able to, to break through, even if it might take us two attempts. So we're, we're going to give it a try. Um, go ahead and do the deliberate attack. And we see that the German forces did retreat. Um, we're going to go and actually look at the results of that battle. I hit F11 there as a reminder to bring up the battle results icons on the map. And let's look at some of the details quickly as we do. And right off the bat I see we lost a number of armored fighting vehicles. Um, and this by far is the most depressing thing that we see out of these numbers, and that is that we lost two KV-1s. KV-1s were a dominant force at this point in the wars. They were just too heavy for the Germans to effectively counter. Uh, and quite, quite famously, uh, especially when they first encountered them, they found that the only way to really survive against them was to leverage their 88 field pieces, 
um, much as we we saw them do historically in the Northern African campaign. If we look here at the gun pieces, they lost nine, we lost seven. We see that most of them for the Germans were mortars, and for us, we lost some anti-tank guns here. Okay, very well. And number of men was about even, and we did lose some aircraft that were running ground support for us. So now we need to switch back using the F1 key back to the movement mode. And we're going to take the 31st Rifle Brigade. And we're going... No, we don't have enough movement points there to, to actually move up. That's okay. So we'll leave that as, it, as is. We've pushed them back a little bit, though. I do wonder if we don't take, though, one of the Rifle Division here. I think we might do so. We're going to take this rifle division and we're going to move it kind of around our lines just like so. And I think that's really going to help us um, in encircling this unit. And we're, we're not going to be able to this turn, but I, I think this will work out quite nicely. I actually probably should have seen if that mechanized group... Yeah. It can't get through there, and that's mostly driven by the terrain and how difficult it would be to move. Very well. Uh, continuing further south, again, we have combat delay on some of those units. We see here that uh, these rifle divisions, they're, they're really not as strong, or certainly not strong enough to break through any of these defensive lines. So then we look over here and we start getting to the point of where we're considering our movement to try to cut off um, this pocket of German forces. And again, as a reminder, one of the primary goals is to see if we can't get to these hex here to cut off these supply lines and then similarly on this side, the same deal. So looking at that, we see that in reserve behind the front line, uh, we have this mechanized battalion, rifle division, mechanized corps, um, and some pretty strong units even already sitting on the front line. Looks like we have some more mechanized units up there. So I think those are what we're going to use to try to, um, after we make a breach in their defensive line, to then flow in using their movement to, to create a pocket of our own behind their lines. So let's take a look here and, and review where it's going to be best to do so. So first let's look at the terrain by taking off the unit hexes, or excuse me, the unit chips, and seeing if there's anywhere that we should probably stay away from based off terrain. Here we have average roads, which is nice, but down here we start to get into poor roads, right? So ideally we'll want to cut in somewhere north of this hex where we have slightly better roads. Let's see. There is some element of snow here. It gets a little worse as we go south, but not terribly so. And here we're moving from I believe this is, I believe that's a heavy wood hex. Yeah, heavy woods moving into light woods, right? So we have a bit of an advantage as well um, already where they're not sitting in heavy woods. So I think let's try to make a cut right from about here straight down. Let's see if we can achieve some progress in that. So to do so, we have to figure out which hex we're first going to attack. So here we have the 197th Infantry and then the Luftwaffe Field Division. And here we have two Luftwaffe Field Divisions. As I mentioned in Episode 1, we're playing a Fog War on, so we don't know too many details about what units they might have, but my gut tells me that those Luftwaffe field divisions are probably going to be a little easier to break through. So I think we're going to put our focus in trying to get past these guys here. So if we were just to take the 234th Rifle Division and a hasty attack shows us not having great odds. A deliberate attack shows that we have moderate odds. And what I want to try to do is to take one of these units that are not mechanized, that are not going to push through behind the line, and see if they can't create the pocket, even if it means we take heavier losses with this infantry uh, division. So we're going to do a deliberate attack here, even though the odds are not necessarily in our favor, and we'll see what happens. 
And we see that we pushed them back, they both retreat it. We actually fared quite well. Again, we'll go look at the results of that. Um, see that we lost eight gun elements, they lost 17. They lost two armored fighting vehicles, we lost 160 men, they lost three, uh, 11. Let's just see what some of those were. So it looks like they had one Stug 3 destroyed by our supporting air units and one that retreated. Curious about the guns, what what was there. And it looks like most of these were flak, which makes sense given the composition of their their unit. Excellent. So now that really helps in trying to get us a bit of a breakout pocket here. So now I'm going to take this rifle division It doesn't look like the rifle division has quite enough here to, to move through. I think there might be a bit of a combat delay coming into effect there. Okay. Let's see if maybe we can't take this guards unit. We're going to push through with them. And I'm going to again to try to break out. Now we have two options here. This one seems to be in slightly worse supply. The second field division. Um, so let's... Let's go back, toggle off our units, and I think it's going to make a little more sense to try to go through here, this pocket, because we see that there's these light woods all the way down, but we do encounter poor roads, but that's going to be a little better than going through these heavy woods, right? I think that makes some sense. We also see that a rail line does run north here. It's not a very sophisticated one, but it's still a source of supply. So we're going to go south and we see that even with a hasty attack we have great odds. We're going to do that and hope we have some movement points left over still to continue in advance. So I'm going to go ahead and do that hasty attack and again they retreat it. Very similar results. We're not going to look into the details of that one I don't think. We now have a bit of a combat delay there. Okay good. So that that is broken up. Now let's take What can we move down here? Are none of these able to move that far? It would appear so. The terrain here is just awful. It's really the, the gist of it. So we're, we are going to move down the first Mechanite Corps. So we did at least get some advance there. And I think what we'll do is to try to improve our situation. We're going to move these down. And we're going to do a bit of a push here to help our flank. Alright, so they're routed and then retreat it. Some pretty good results here. That was slightly larger, so we will take a look at it. They lost 560 men. We lost 286. We lost one support escort one support or uh, one ground supporting bomber excuse me 12 guns they lost 27 in one tank they actually had seven i shouldn't say tanks it may not technically be a tank they had seven armored fighting vehicles that's interesting so i wonder what the ones that weren't lost were i'm not sure i can see that well actually we'll go show all it's just going to show us the losses. Same thing here. Okay. Fair enough. Close out of that. Go back to our movement mode. So that, that certainly helps here. Bring a little bit more of a beachhead. We can move some of these units down. And it's really kind of... It's going to drain them a little because we're going to be exhausting all of their movement points. But I really do want to reinforce this section. I wonder if we're getting too aggressive by bringing down some of these units. Because we're sitting right across from the 1st Panzer Division. And then the Grossdeutschland Motorized Division as well. So those are not units to be messed around with. Um, and we, we certainly don't want them being aggressive and countering here on our flank. So we'll leave that as is. 
uh, we'll now review to see if there's anything we can do here. I just want to see what the math adds up to if we were to try a deliberate attack here. Because as much as we can kind of weaken their line, get them on the back front a little, the it does, that old adage, right, best offense is the best defense, it may help us a little if we can put the 197th Infantry Division on its heels a little. So let's do that. Good. They did retreat. We suffered some losses. Uh, looks like a total of six aircraft loss in ground support, which is unfortunate, but that's good. So we've pushed them back now, too. So on, on this side of the pocket, I think we've been pretty successful. I, I'm hopeful that in one to two turns, if we keep this up, we might be able to make a break all the way down here once we get into a little bit more open country past their lines to to make it all the way to um, these roads that are supplying their forces in the north. Okay, so there's that. And another thing to look at too is this Demidov Air Base. It's just the size one, so it's nothing to measure. Well, I bet you Smolensk is a little larger, yeah, so it's size two. Um, so I don't know there's going to be too much importance in trying to get that early on here in the offensive. Looking at these units here in the north, kind of um, halting this pocket, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get aggressive here, and we're, we're not going to go after them with a direct push down. I would rather save these men and this equipment to, to fight a weakened enemy. If we are successful in, in hurting, or at the very least distracting them to protect their own lines of supply, that's when I would prefer to engage in mass with these these forces. Um, but these, if you look just roughly here, these are all very dug in. Uh, dug in may not be the best technical expression either, but they're they're in very defensive positions and strengths, right? So we're going to leave those be. We see over here there are some units that we can probably look at um, moving up here with time, but we're going to. To leave them be because a number also still need to recover movement points before we could bring up it's like this this moscow defense zone right it was clearly deployed to in case a breakout happened to defend moscow we're going to leave those be for now later on we'll try to re reposition them for more use again don't have any movement points there this first guards cavalry might be able to do something there so now we start looking on the um, more eastern flank to see where can we cut in. And I'm going to turn off the chips again using the T toggle. T toggle, excuse me. And I, I accidentally moved that unit, which of course was in air. So we're going to click out of these. There we go. So looking here, our objective is going to be a little easier. Right? Because really, the first... The first priority on this side is to cut off one of these hexes, resulting in that line of supply not making it, making it further north to these units. And this is actually a rail line, which is even more impactful than necessarily this road that they have running. Ideally, if we could take this intersection here, it would be most impactful as it also then cuts off a route to... Um, to the rest of their defensive line, right? So that that's another positive. Right now, technically, supplies can go from way back here, back into the access territories, up through Smolensk, and up this railroad. So let's see what we could do to cut off one of those hexes. Defensive values of 15, at least, uh, 22, 35, and an HQ unit with a 58 here. That's nothing to... To, to joke about, right? That's pretty serious. Um, so our best bet is actually probably going to be this city here with these motorized units. So let's see if we can't bring in some reinforcements. And let's just do some math now to see. So those are one-to-one -one even odds. Boy, one-to-one -one even odds attacking a defender in a, a city or, or larger town does not sound that ideal, does it? So what else could we move? It looks like that can make it there. I don't know if it'll have enough movement to actually attack. It will. It will. Okay, well that's good. 
and we can also bring up this rifle division. And let's do the same thing that we did earlier in the um, episode. And let's see if we can't maybe find some support units to attach here and to help out a little. So we don't have anything tied to the specific HQ of the 50th Army, so we're actually going to leave that be. I just realized that this was that unit I accidentally, when I was toggling the map modes, had moved down. And we now find ourselves quite far out of the, the HQ here. And I think that's going to have some result to our combat effectiveness. Um, but at this point in the turn, there's not too much we can do to, to rectify that. So that may have to stay as is for now. We see over here, none of these have any movement points. So we are running out of options to look at to get help. And we can only attack from these two hexes. wonder any stronger motorized units or anything we can bring up here I'm trying to see where we have some reserves that can plug a hole and we can kind of do a bit of a domino effect working our way back but I'm not seeing anything so th this is where this is where we're just going to test our luck everyone that it's one to one odds. This is going to be difficult. If we're successful, though, this is a huge, huge victory in this section of the, the war. Um, let's give it a try. They held. Wow, those are some losses. Let, let's take a look at that before we consider the next action. So they lost 300 men, we lost 900. They lost 12 guns, we lost 34. They lost nine armored fighting vehicles. We lost 36. We also lost a total of 10 aircraft. That is not too good. The good news here is they did lose four Panzer III's, two Panzer Mark IV's, and two Martyr II's. A Martyr II being a, a propelled uh, tank destroyer gun. Our losses were primarily in T-60s and T-34s. So a, a lot of lighter recon tanks there, but still a number of medium as well. So we're going to go back to move mode. Yeah, I think we're starting to run out of some action points here to actually do an attack. That unit has some... Um, Here we don't even have one-to-one -one odds. I think we're going to do it, though. We need to give it a shot. We really need to. It won't let us. We have a combat delay. Very well. All right. So we were unable to break through on this side. That is unfortunate. Looking around here, I don't know that there's a better opportunity to really do anything. It's, it's a pretty... We, we need to stay pretty defensive down here, and if we, if we look at it, we are holding on to a very important crossing of supply lines here in Kirov um, with just this unit. So I, I in no way want to stretch any of these forces. Just even looking at it here, they have the 18th Panzer Division, and I just imagine if they really focus their forces, they could, they could probably do quite a bit of damage attacking there. That, that's unfortunate, everyone. I was, I was hoping we would have had some better better fortune there. So I think we're going to have to try again next turn. If we go back to our strategic objectives overview, right, it was in this section in episode one that we really kind of said, you know, there, there's not a focus to push here. If there's an opportunity, we will, but we don't have any specific objective to make our way, say, down to Kursk or Kiev from this direction. So what we're going to do is just go through our line of forces and see if there's anything here that, that stands out to us and says, you know what, this is a clear opportunity. So this is catching my eye a little, right? So we have um, this town here, Orel, uh, has some victory points with it. Also is a bit of a, a hub that would help with logistics and supplies. 
um, and we see that we have some moderate sized forces here. Um, it actually looks like this is actually some, some cavalry in this unit. Um, I do wonder if maybe we can't at the very least put pressure and try to break through these units, right? Because six is not very much in terms of defense. We see that we have this background on our hex indicating that this is snowing here. Um, whereas when we were a little further up north, there, there wasn't necessarily that snow weather here. So given that, what I'm probably going to do is when we do have engagements, unless it is of critical importance, I will likely start toggling off our ground support. Um, just because with the weather, I, I think you can see higher operational losses. And an operational loss is when you may lose an airframe for a reason outside of combat. So it could be a, um, a training exercise with the new pilot. They crash the plane. They make a mistake. It could be coming in on landing. Um, you you then crash in your landing. Um, it could be weather related, right? So um, operational losses can go a little higher um, when there's inclement weather. And I think that's why we probably haven't seen quite as much um, air interaction from the, the German side as of yet either. So all of that said, I think we can probably try to push through in this hex or this hex. This is certainly more appealing because it has that road leaving directly to Aurel, but I think this is the weaker point that we might be able to take advantage of. Toggling off our hex, let's just see if there's any differences here. Poor roads, poor roads poor roads. There is the rail line, of course, there. And we do have snowfall. Snow is at a value of two and, oh, it's three down here. So the, the weather is getting a little worse in some of these more southern areas, it looks like. Okay, very well. So I wonder if instead what we don't do is we take our rifle division, we move it up the line. Are we not able to? Is there a delay on that unit, perhaps? Ah, yes. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember this. This is like the, the combat uh, fatigue value or the combat rating that's left. And if they're at zero, they're not going to be very effective with anything. And we see that we have the same thing here. So even if we were to do the math on these three, yeah, we're not going to be able to break through. So I, I, I think an opportunity exists there, but I think we're just going to have to wait until the next turn to take advantage of it. Continuing on here, you see these units don't have any movement points currently available. Same here. So we're going to continue on all the way down, because it's the same situation, to Stalingrad. Right, The, the more famous of the, the battles and areas of the war on the Eastern Front that many of you may have more intimate knowledge of. So we see here the, the, the Volga River and where the forces were, the German forces were held at the river. Uh, they control much of the city and the, the lines behind it, obviously. What they've actually done is they've reinforced their flanks um, with Romanian uh, forces. Uh, so these are not, for the most part, German forces that are holding this line. And we see that over here we actually even have some Italian forces. That's these chips highlighted in yellow. Um, and the green represent forces from Hungary. So when we look at the situation... They are quite well defended right here at the point of their attack where they're trying to capture Stalingrad. And there's also the river providing them additional defensive bonuses. So the frontal assault here just does not make any sense. What does make sense, though, in my mind looking at this, is to do a rather historical envelopment of their, their force holding Stalingrad by attacking their allies on the flanks and... It, to be a little stereotypical here, I, I think there were probably a number of allied forces to the Germans that may not have been as equipped or as well equipped as the German forces. They they made some, some huge contributions to the war. I'm not trying to in any way be derogatory to some of those armed forces, but um, I think the equipment that they had traditionally was just a little bit below on average what a German uh, unit may have possessed. So I think there's an opportunity that can be pressed here. We see already, just from looking at the combat values, right? You, you consider what we have right here, ready to go against a unit that just on the surface has a defensive ranking of four, and that you look behind it, and we have all these tank cores just ready to go. 
So I think we can break through right here moving south, and our objective will be very similar as it was in that more northern pocket by Moscow, is to cut off their line of supply here, and then we will do the same on the eastern flank, trying to cut off this line of supply, right, because we have these two rail lines that are making their way up to Stalingrad. So the first thing I'm going to do is looking at this, the snowfall does seem to be much heavier and constant down here, so we are going to toggle off our ground support um, to try to prevent just large numbers of aircraft losses in supporting our ground offensives. And we're going to follow a similar strategy where we're going to say, hey, can we take a frontline force that's holding the line, use that to break through and create a pocket, and then let the more motorized, mechanized forces follow in behind it. So let's let's start with that. We see that we have the 119th Rifle Division, 47th Guard, the 14th Guard. And I think we're going to take maybe the 47th Guard. And that's 1 to 1 odds, so if we do a deliberate attack, it's 2 to 1. Very well. Go ahead and attack. The defending force is held. Be honest I'm just a little surprised by that so let's see if we try again what happens and now we actually see we don't have enough I perhaps got a little too confident there in our ability to just break through if we add the 14th guard to the situation let's try that all right so they've retreated they took a thousand men in losses my goodness um, so that that was pretty heavy losses for them and now what we're going to do is move in. I think it was the 119th that we didn't actually use in that force. And we're going to do a... There's actually an infantry division there defending the HQ, so that's why it's not as easy it may, as it may look. Let's now take... I think we'll take the 203rd. Let's see if we can't... Actually... And we're not going to move it down. We're going to see if we can't force out these units here. So we're going to take both these. And we're going to do a deliberate attack. Defending force is held again. My goodness. They are doing quite well against our initial probes against their line. And now we see that we don't quite have enough to finish them off. Okay. So let's see. Can this... We're going to take the 266 Rifle Division, and although we're starting to stretch a little bit this HQ, we are going to bring it down here, and we're going to add it to our attack. And that's even odds, but they're, they've already been softened up. We already see that they probably have some supply issue. We're going to push ahead. They held again. Literally. Just put my, my hands behind my head there as I'm thinking about that. That's um, that's unexpected. Let's take a look at some of those battle details and see what happened. So in the first engagement, we each suffered about 1,000 men in losses. They lost 20 guns, we lost 15. We look at some of those ground losses. Mostly rifle squads and pioneer squads. It looks like they have some cavalry, which that, that may be helping their situation. As the Soviets, mostly rifle squads. Let's look at some of the guns that were lost. So it looks like a number of AA guns and mortars that they lost. And we lost some anti-tank guns. There was no armor involved. I think one part that may be playing into this is we got used to having some of that air support. And you see here we don't have any. So we're going to go back to our movement mode. I wonder... Those are already pretty weakened as is. Okay, very well. So we're going to take our first tank core and move that down. And what happens then when we do all these forces combined? 6.9. We're going to push it. We're going to try. They held again. Wow. I'm very impressed by these guys. Okay, we're going to continue moving down that tank core. And 
and we're going to take this tank core. This is the one we're really going to push forward with. You see we, we force their HQ there into a bit of a retreat. I'm going to go even one further. And then we're going to bring up that unit. Alright, so we're stretching this line, this column of armor. I'm going to assume that next to that HQ is another... I'd have to assume it's another infantry division. Now we're going to move this down. And I think what we'll do is we'll now attack this cavalry corps we're going to use to attack here. Alright, so they are routed. Excellent. 20, 2300 men they lost there. Let's just take another quick look at that. 42 guns. We lost 74 and 3 guns. That was very well done by our guys. Um, most of it was all retreated, so they, they weren't necessarily destroyed. But that is still quite the victory. Good stuff happening. Okay. And I think here I have created a bottleneck completely unintentionally. See, where now I can't get these units through. So I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to push through right here. There we go. Defending forces held. We had two to one on that. Let's take a look at what happened. They lost 900. We lost 1,400. 22 guns to 17 guns. My goodness. A lot of anti-tank and mortars there. Same for us. Okay. Let's see if we can do it again. Oh, it's even odds now. Let's try again. Alright, they're routed. That is good news for us. That is good news. So now what we're going to try to do is bring up some of these units here in the rear. See, and I actually want to push this all the way down. So the 4th Tank Corps has now interrupted this rail line leading up to Stalingrad. That is excellent news for us. Very excellent news. Thinking, thinking to maybe make another push here. I don't know what we gain though if we do. That, that's the only hesitation I have. I think it might be better to actually bring it down here. Um, and it may be worth trying to force this unit out because the thing that I want to stay cognizant of is if we have a counterattack, it is coming from this massive German forces. This is what would try to break out. Right? It's not going to be these Romanian forces holding this line. So I think we need to keep an eye towards the north. Now, if they do try to return and retreat to try to break out of a pocket we're trying to make against them, then it simply means we can be more aggressive with our frontline units here, and then we can start pushing from this side. So our defensive line doesn't have to be impenetrable. I mean, they, they might even break through. That's okay. The point is we're getting them to leave their defensive positions with our main forces um, giving great chase to them. So let's see. I think we might try to take out that unit as well. Yep, let's do it. So they retreated. We, we lost some armor though. That's disappointing. And we're going to move these forces up. Let's actually first see if we can get these going down south, though. All right, so now we're starting to build up a defensive line here, where we're more than just these tank cores deep. We're 
We're gonna bring these down. Bring these down. Now that we have this here, I'm wondering if we don't go a little further. it up. This is looking good, everyone. This is looking good. Move them here. Artillery division, we're going to leave that be. All right. All right. Yeah, those are the units we already tried to attack there. Okay. Good stuff. We're going to move up this rifle division from kind of that reserve position that it's in right now. And we're going to do the same with this unit. I can try to reinforce a little. Do we press the attack, maybe? Hmm. We're not crossing a river anymore there. Let's give it a try. They retreated. Ooh, we took some losses there, though. And I think that was actually, if I saw correctly, I think we finally started hitting some of the German line. Yeah. Okay. So they had a Painzer Jäger battalion and a motorized flak battalion. So let's look, because there's actually some interesting losses there. They lost 300 men, we lost 630. They lost 13 guns, we lost 20. They lost 11 armored fighting vehicles, and we lost 16. Start with the armored fighting vehicles. So we destroyed three Panzerjäger and three Murder twos, whereas we lost 11 T-34s and only five of the T-60s, my goodness. They lost mostly mortars, and we lost these 45 millimeter anti-tank guns. Um, and some mortars too, and some mortars too. Okay, very well. Go back to our movement mode. I actually don't know that even if we could, we would want to advance there. Because again, we don't want to open ourselves up to being undefended against the counterattack. I am looking at it if we don't. It's just so tempting, everyone. It's so tempting. Because we don't really have great intel of what those other units are there. And considering that this is a tank corps, they may, they may be able to overrun them. But we're, we're going to leave that be. I think what we will do, though... So this is poor roads, poor roads. We're gonna leave that be because we don't we don't want any chance of getting cut off there. And we're gonna hold there. Because we, we've done we've done the task, right? We we have cut off that line. And this air base does not necessarily seem to be in use if I'm reading that correctly. Probably because when we move down there, our zone of control probably... I don't know how that works, actually. I have to, to research that. I don't know if it captures any air units or airframes that would have been there. Okay, so very well. We had great success here on the western flank. Now what we have to do is try to repeat that here on the eastern flank. And this... This will be both more difficult and a little easier. It's easier because we don't have to make as much of a push to 
intersect their line of supply. And actually, did I misread the map earlier? I did. Look at this, guys. I, I didn't even catch this earlier. Their only rail line going into Stalingrad, we have, we have cut off. We don't even necessarily need to capture this line because this is not providing any source of supply to the forces in Stalingrad. I still think we're, we're, we're still going to push, right, to try to have an envelopment of their forces and to get behind them. Um, but that's excellent news. So in that case, we're just going to work our way from the bottom and up, taking advantage of every fight where we, where we can. So we'll start here. We're just going to do a hasty attack. They held? We have five of one odds. How did they held? Let's try it again. They retreated. Okay. That was a little confusing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move them there. And then... I think we'll do one attack here. They held it. Treated. Okay, that's better. They're not quite strong enough there to make a break. So we're going to try to break through here. I'm just going to do a hasty attack. They're routed. Excellent. Move down here. So I kind of want to overwhelm this one force to see if we can't get it to route as well. But at the same time, the objective is not to route that unit. The objective is to try to put as much pressure and threaten as much as possible in circling the German forces. So we're going to ignore the temptation and we're going to focus on moving westward here. So we're going to force them back. They're routed. Excellent. Good stuff. Let's see. I don't know that we want to use both of those, though. Hmm. I think we will. They held again. They're, they're not... They're, it's not, cl it's not um, comfortable that they're holding. They're holding at 50 yards or whatever that unit measure is. I can't remember. So it's not... Very close. Okay, so this time they routed. It. Too much pressure. They lost half their guns. 2,000 men. Very well. And now we're going to take this armor unit and we're going to press in behind. Should be able to route that unit. Shattered them. Look at that. Shattered them. We're going to press even further and then those units are gone. So for now, this is going to be as far as we go west, I think because we don't want to become too overextended. We're now going to create kind of this zone where we've gone around them. We're going to go a little further here. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. I don't think so. We're going to leave that be. We've made great progress here already. But if we do, we're doing it. I did not see what that pop-up was. I wish I had read that faster. We'll have to find out what that was. Okay. So we... We now technically have encircled them. I'm a little worried because we are stretched very thin um, in doing so. I think probably one of the worst case scenarios here is that they do a complete withdrawal to try to break out before they're encircled. And even if that is their move next turn, I'm feeling pretty good because I think that will at least give us the opportunity then to... They're, they're not going to break out every unit. It, it is too many units to move out that quickly 
I think if they start towards that path, these forces here then can come south and just, just hammer them. So I'm, I'm optimistic there. So what we're going to do is just continue pressing as much as we can to collapse this side so they can't do one straight shot back. So we're going to go there, route at them. 2,700 losses, 52 guns. We actually are going to move that unit here. And let's try a deliberate... Oh, we have a combat delay there. Okay, very well. And let's see what we can do here. Three to one odds to retreat it. Good. So now we're going to move up into position. And here we... Yeah. Yeah, you see here we start getting into some of those German forces. Let's see if we can route these guys. Yep, routed them. Good. Good. We pressed the advantage and we got it. Excellent news. I think one thing that I'm a little worried about now looking at this, though, is... This, well, it's not that far from the HQ. That's pretty far from the HQ, though. We're not going to move them up too far, but we are going to move them up here. We're gonna leave those HQs there because that's that's pretty important with the rail line. Okay. Good. This is part of No, it's a different HQ. Alright. Alright. Can any of these make their way further far enough south to support? No, it just it compromises the, the integrity of that army, I think, if we do that geographically. This this is looking good feel good about this. I feel very good about this. Can we still press anything here? I wonder. I wonder if it's not worth moving this unit. Because it has the movement points to do so, if that maybe helps reinforce a little bit. I don't imagine their breakout being here. I think if they do break out, it's going to be right down the center and the crux is is going to be this 13th mechanized. Let's let's see what these heroes are made out of, these future heroes. So they have one KV-1, two of the KV-1s are damaged. They have 79 T-34s. That is nothing to balk at. And quite a few, quite a few men. Um, their supply is low. Their ammo is... Well, low is, it's not terrible, but they are, oh my goodness, really. I did not see that. They are out of fuel, my friends. They are out of fuel. Oh no. Combat fatigue's high too. Oh no. Okay, they're already at priority four. I didn't mean to change that. I don't know there's going to be too much more we can do. Can we get any of these? No. Okay. That's not good. They're, they're going to be sitting there with their tanks, unable to start, just having them in entrenched positions, trying to hold back a force if they do counterattack. My goodness. I am hopeful some supply can make it to them, though. Even the most minimal amounts. We, we simply need them to hold another turn for these forces to then catch up. Do we maybe move... Can we move everything one more? Yes, we can. Let's do that. Let's move everything one more. And then I am going to this time move that unit. Very well. I think that gives us a slightly better defensive line. They don't have enough. This is the HQ unit. My goodness, we don't want to move that. Okay. Very well. We could... We are at the very least going to move this one further down. Is 
there anything mechanized up here that could come down? Naval rifle now. I can't do anything. Just wish there was something we could send to help here. Okay. That that we are going to have to wait and see. This is going to be very interesting at the end turn. What exactly happens? We're going to continue moving south. This kind of wraps up our Stalingrad encirclement. I think it's gone well. Let's see if there are other opportunities to push a little here. I think there may be here. No, we we don't have any combat readiness with these forces. So we're going to have to leave that as is. That's fine. And further south, here and now we start to get into these southern Caucasus regions. We're going to real quick go through this because, again, I don't have any intention of being terribly aggressive here. Arab Special Purpose Battalion. We don't have any action points there to go against them. Same here. These forces are not that strong. It is tempting to maybe like take these units and find a weak point to, to press against, but... The, the objective in the south here for us is don't lose. That That's the game plan, right? Because where we're going to win is up here by Stalingrad and that pocket that was driving on Moscow. So looking at this, we're going to stay as is. And I think we're going to stay just as we are here. Okay, I think we're going to start wrapping up this episode then. Um, I think it's been quite successful. I'm, I am very pleased with what we've seen happen here in Stalingrad. It is not a terribly strong perimeter that we have created, but we have broken through their flanks, and now the Germans have a decision to make. Do they try to press to get out, or do they simply use the forces that are already in their flanks and are already in their reserves to try to break out? If they use their reserves and their flanks, I don't know they're going to have enough to really be able to stop us from encircling them. If they go full out as a retreat from Stalingrad, which I think is now most likely considering what we've accomplished here, um, I think they will break through because we weren't able to build as strong of a line as I would have liked. Um, but I don't think they'll, they'll get out without very, very heavy losses, which is the whole point, is to try to get them on a bit of a run. Up here, um, near Smolensk, we had some good progress on this side where in another turn or two, I think we can probably cut off this road that is heading north, and optimistically in the next turn or two, we can also cut off this rail line. Um, I think they have more opportunity. I think they've probably seen now what we are trying to do, and I would not be surprised to see them start to slowly fall back and create one defensive line that just runs east-west here in front of Smolensk. And then this was all episode one action where there wasn't a whole lot we were able to do. We did break through right here, but then we had a bit of a surprise running into the um, 8th Panzer Division. So what we're going to do now is we're going to end the turn, and we'll go through what that looks like. And... I'm just going to make sure that I've selected that we're allowing our, the AI to manage our depots for the next logistics phase. We're going to hit end turn. And you see now that it's going to go through a number of different phases. And right now, I believe, yeah, this is all the air supply phase that we have with our units. So you can see here these lines. It's doing air supply from here to here. Uh, three tons of freight delivered and three tons of freight delivered, etc. Um, various amounts of supply being delivered by uh, our air units. Now you see the UI change color scheme. This is now the logistics turn for the Axis forces. And in the bottom right in this text box, you can see all the various things that they are working through. Uh, repairing depots, repairing rails, etc., etc. And after this finishes, um, then it's going to move to the Germans' air phase. And, and that's where we'll see if they're doing any ground attacks, if they're running um, any type of strategic or infrastructure level bombing. I, I doubt it, given the weather condition, conditions, etc. But it is 
now that I say that, actually, the, the weather may have changed as we are now on November 26. Again, the turns are one week long, so it could be that um, climate-wise, meteorology, meteorology, I'm not going to try that again, uh, they, they could have found themselves with a different weather situation uh, to take advantage of. I do wish that we could be a little more interactive as this was loading, looking at some of the the detail that the game offers and such, but you do just kind of have to wait for these turns to, to process. And here they are now executing their air operational phase. Um, and in just a moment, yep, there we go. We see this little box that says the number of sorties, the number of losses they've had, etc. Sounds like they're doing some type of recon, right? Um, very well, so they've run 160, they've lost 22. Most of their losses have been operational. We have suffered no losses, but it does look like we've shot down four of their forces in air combat and one via ground-based flak. Um, so that, that's encouraging. They're one-third the way through their air execution phase, so here goes some more. Oh, we've now shot down 11 in air combat. Excellent, excellent. Two-thirds done with their ex air execution phase. We have suffered one loss, and it was operational. So maybe they, they crash-landed, maybe it was weather impact, or, or what have you. They've now lost 32 um, air airframes. And now it's beginning their ground turn. So this, this is where we hold with bated breath, everyone, to see um, the, the Germans infamous for their ability to counterattack. Um, let, let's see what they do. And let's see if they're able to break through any of the pockets that we have tried to create. Oh, this is air supply, uh, so we haven't quite gotten to any ground combat yet. You see, though, that we're actually shooting down a number of... Um, number of their forces. We lost four yaks there. Interesting. So it's kind of going both ways, right, as our air units try to intercept theirs. All right, the first ground combat. So it looks like... Oh, it looks like they're actually doing a bit of a counterattack here in this pocket. I didn't see the result of the battle, though, so we're going to have to go take a look at that. I'm not too worried if they do make some type of progress here because this is not one of our kind of strategic objectives regarding this pocket here. I, I feel we're in a pretty comfortable position. I don't think we're going to have a turn of tide in the war if they head north from here. I think we still might see... Are they done. It looks like they're doing their frontline organization. I don't know if we're going to see any more combat from them, which is interesting because I I was kind of expecting some type of response down by Stalingrad. Thirty percent done with their ground turn. When this all completes, what we'll do is we'll do a quick look at the end of turn summary and we'll just speak very high level to what we see on the map happened. Um, but then we'll actually leave everything past that for episode three, which will be coming out shortly. 92% done with the German uh, ground turn. So almost finished loading. Still building that reserve line. Okay, there we go. There we go. Doing rail repair, one of the last steps they have. Okay. They did not break through. Interesting. This is now running through our logistics, um, much as we saw happen with the Germans when we ended our turn. excited to see what they did. It's, it's going to be very interesting, I feel. The 
they stay in Stalingrad, that's going to be a bit of a shock. But they they might they might think they have no choice. Force the way done here with our logistics phase wrapping up now. All right, and a quick save. So, this is our turn summary that we get at the beginning of every turn. Uh, we'll go through this pretty quickly. Here, we're listing out our friendly losses. So, in total, lost 64,000 men, 600 guns, 100 armored fighting vehicles. 475 airframes. These are order of battle changes, so these are all Soviet here. So here we see, was it a net positive or net negative for a number of, of men on the map? So we, in total on the map, lost 62,000, 16, or excuse me, 1,500 guns. We were net positive um, 100 on the map, armored fighting vehicles, and net positive 17 airframes. Our theater boxes, so these are the other areas that are simulated off map. Uh, we saw gains in the number of total servicemen, gains in the number of guns. We saw a decrease in armored fighting vehicles, and we saw 700 uh, new airframes joined in the theater boxes, and there were no transfers in. For the Axis totals, uh, this is just their net numbers. So in net, they grew their forces by 35,000 men, lost 200 guns, 162 gained in armored fighting vehicles, and 570 airframes gained. So that that is not a trend that we want to continue. So we, we took heavy losses in our airframes, and a big portion of those were doing ground support for some of our offensives. So it gave us the advantage we needed in some cases, but it's not something we can sustain every turn. Looking here at logistics, we see some total numbers just around um, total supplies received, fuel, etc. And then combat unit alerts, this is very helpful. So this is how many units do you have on the map? 468. 75% or less supply are 64 units. Under strength is 73 units. Seems rather high actually. And then unready we have 22 units and five are isolated. And I am curious if maybe it's considering the Stalingrad encirclement as some isolated units or something there now. Um, and then we have this little summary of, of victory points of the initiative. So we're going to close this. We're going to real quick look at news events. So Garrison shortage in the Far East. Shortage of Soviet forces in the Far East has negative political costs. So we lose one victory point and one administration point, I think is what the AP is. Um, so this is something we might look at in episode three of possibly um, doing a transfer of forces to the Far East theater box to try to prevent this from continuing. Axis ground setback in North Africa. So this is rather historical. And it looks like there's a shortage of forces that leads to a setback in North Africa. Um, North African campaign events are moved forward. So I think there are probably historical triggers that will happen with historical dates in terms of how that campaign worked and the units that they are putting into those theater boxes. And then the Italian campaign events are also moved forward. So this might indicate that we may see an earlier invasion of um, Sicily, which was that Operation Torch, if I remember right? right? Or was Operation Torch the U.S. invasion north of Africa? I'm sorry, I, I should have considered this before just saying it aloud. Um, so those events are moved forward. We also see garrison shortage in WE. I think that's Western Europe. Yep, Western Europe. So that's giving the access problems. And then we just have our situation report, which we started the scenario with. Oh, Soviet partisans. I missed this one. So it looks like there are additional partisans in uh, German-occupied Soviet territory. So real quick, not going to spend much time on this. Let's just see what they did at high level. It looks like they pushed back our units here and they started a bit of a withdrawal of these forces because they used to stretch all along here. Okay, very well. Um, our units that had explored and, and surprise, found the 8th Panzer Army. Um, while they were not immediately counterattacked, uh, 
we we see that they um they are likely to be attacked soon with these forces that are mounting here. And then let's go take a look at Stalingrad. Actually, let's zoom back in here. Oh no. Okay. Okay, so we're, we're going to have to do some battle results here. Um, th this is not good. So our forces that had started to break out down here, it looks like they were cut off and, and maybe one retreated there. That's not good. That's not good. So our, our push here from this flank has probably failed and we'll have to consider a new strategy, I think. Um, on a different note, it would appear that they are evacuating this front line. So it probably would have made this strategy we are trying to implement mute um, because we probably would not have pushed ahead with it um, with their forces starting to withdraw so quickly. So there, there's a positive and a negative there. Um, and then when we move further south to look at Stalingrad. Wow. Wow, they, they did not retreat at all. My goodness. They're, they're all going to get stuck there because we're now going to be able to take our forces and create a defensive perimeter and just slowly kill off their supplies. Wow. Okay. Interesting. And I don't think there were any other measurable changes. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, please give the video a like and subscribe if you'd like to continue seeing this work. Um, if you have any questions about the game or just comments, advice, I think you've seen I'm no um, expert on every aspect of this game. Please, please leave it in the comments below. And look forward to having you guys join for the next episode, uh, which should be out in the next couple of days. Hope you all have a wonderful day and take care.